breathe normally. And we start with the root chakra, and that comes at the base of the spine. He's teaching this to a congregation of Christians. So it's no surprise to anybody that we are one step closer to the end times. As we are stepping into 2024, we're noticing anything between aliens to Epstein flight logs, distractions, 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 but lots of demonic stuff in between. The devil is in the details after all. So I believe in paying attention to a little bit of everything and the entire direction that the church has decided to take into 2024 with Pope Francis uh, blessing same-sex couples. Nice job, team. Yes, couples. And you best believe there is going to be a Catholic schism coming up. But the Catholic Church isn't the only church that is in trouble for a little while now. We have also had the United Methodist Church starting to raise its ugly head up. And I have here a member of the clergy. And right off the top of my head, I cannot remember exactly where this is. And maybe that's for the best because that particular church is going to hell in a handbasket. So what if I told you that this clergyman is a pagan? He is a practicing pagan. And he is about to teach this church witchcraft. This video is for informational purposes only, blah, blah, blah. I am not here to slander anybody. This is not trying to defamate anybody. This is the truth. The truth will come to light. And you know what? Cat Williams did a really good job on kicking off 2024 as well. I'm really excited about 2024 and what God is doing to bring the truth out to the entire world, especially out of Hollywood. If you guys could please like this video, subscribe to this channel. If I could ask you guys to do one more thing, and that is to find someone to share this video with, because the, we are in some scary times. This church is just one of many that is doing things like this behind closed doors. This church just so happened to record it. And without further ado, here is the sermon. I don't get a chance to preach very often outside of my own community in Washington, D.C., but... This seems to be a, a second home for me. Does this guy resemble Lyle from George of the Jungle to you? Because I cannot get him out of my head. That is all I see when I look at this dude and his gorgeous locks. The scripture this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17. It's one sentence. Because there is one body, we who are many, excuse me. Yeah, bro, get your scripture right. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the same bread. I want you guys to keep in mind the verse that he uses here because it is the premise of his entire sermon. It's his uh, teaching for this sermon, 1 Corinthians 10, 17. As we know as Christians, and we ought to know this, the body of Christ is made up of Christians. Anyone who is not Christian is not within the body of Christ. They need to be preached to. We do not just welcome them in without first giving them the gospel and having them understand the gospel and accepting Christ. And then they become a babe of Christ. Then we build them up. We disciple them or somebody within the body chooses to disciple them. And then they go out and they do the same thing. And then with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, so on, so forth. As I was getting ready to continue my my scan of the neighborhood. Someone appeared onto the roof. I had never done something like this. I, I just stood and they stood and I raised my right hand and I gave a little wave. And right at the time that my hand got here, their hand went up and they waved. And we put our hands down. And for just a moment, it makes my hair come up on my arms even now does mine too to be honest it's kind of creepy <laughs> you don't know who that is for the one moment we were connected there was a bond and as wild as it may sound i i love them what do you mean by that just in that one hush of a moment that one heartbeat. He has no idea who this person is. No discernment is required. Didn't know their name, didn't know their gender, didn't know anything about them. But the fact of the matter is, his hand went up 
and this matchstick's hand went up, could have been an entity for all we knew. And I was falling asleep and I thought about that person on the roof and I smiled. And then I wondered, I wonder if they're in their bed thinking about the same thing. I want to offer something, invite you to a practice this morning. It's something that's going to sound pretty strange to you maybe, but I want you to, if you're, I'd like to invite you to play along. You're not going to have to leave your seats or move much, but I want us to do an experiment together. Let me uh, also have you guys just keep in mind that the majority of the body of Christ has people well into their 70s and 80s who are still babes in Christ. It's because we don't push discipleship first, especially here in the West. If they read their Bibles, they might just have a little bit of an inkling that something is off, but they don't catch it. They allow this man to do this. Watch what happens next. I want you to put your feet flat on the floor, if you're able, and have your hands on your lap. And I'm learning this technique. Uh, it's called Reiki. I don't like where this is going. It's the first word is Ray, which means God's wisdom, higher power. Key is our life force energy. So it's a way that we are grounding ourselves with, within ourselves and with the divine, with God. Right here is about the point that someone should be stopping this man from speaking altogether. Generally, people would just call this witchcraft. I don't like just calling everything that's against God witchcraft. I think that actually starts to numb out the term to the point where people just don't, they just kind of roll their eyes. It doesn't really get in here. This Reiki, it's essentially Japanese Buddhism. It's somewhere in the center of Japanese Buddhism. But for all intents and purposes, this is witchcraft. He is teaching witchcraft in the congregation right now. All things go to God, right? Well, New Agers believe that. Um, Christians should know better. Not all paths lead to God. We cannot coexist, and we are not all interconnected by default. That's what it means to be born again. And Reiki is, looks at seven centers of the body. This is ancient. You can, Google will tell you what this is when you get home. Well, it's an option. I wouldn't do it because it will lead you down a freaking rabbit hole. God knows what kind of information you're going to get. It's the seven chakras of the body, and chakras are energy centers, and they're aligned with the colors of the spectrum. So this is a way to embody an inner alignment. So I invite you to close your eyes with your hands on your legs and breathe normally. And we start with the root chakra, and that comes at the base of the spine. Are you serious? We have this seven chakra system where at the base of the spine is a coiled up snake. You, there are people to this day that have these kundalini awakenings or awakenings in general where they feel something running through them and they believe it's their own um, spirit, their own energy running through their spirit, meeting with their body and doing these wacky things when actually what it is is possession. Now, what do I like to call this? Think of it this way. You ever had a command prompt on your computer where it's just a black screen and then white text? And then you essentially can go through the back end of the computer and get it to do things that you otherwise couldn't on the main interface. God teaches us to work on the main interface with our five senses. It's important to know though that God does not want us to use the command prompt to bypass our bodies to get through to our spirit, which is essentially what this is. This is what I have coined as spirit hacking. This is when you are going into the spirit through the command prompt and you're getting your body engaged with, this, with your soul to be able to do things like astral project. God does not want you working like that. And he's teaching this to a congregation of Christians it is the place of our ground. This is who we are. And the phrase that is used, a biblical phrase, I am. So the I am is in me. The I am is in you. The I am is in everybody. We're all made in God's image after all. This is the seat of our belonging. This is who we are as individuals. No need to be born again, it seems. Has he mentioned that yet? I don't think he has. Next is the throat chakra. It's not only the place of our voices, 
but it's the place of our truth. It's the place of our deepest truth. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I'm not gonna go through every single chakra here. That's not what this video is for, but notice that he's saying this is our truth. Your truth, my truth. Wasn't it uh, Pontius Pilate that asked Jesus, what is truth? The phrase unitive consciousness is one I wanna introduce to you today if you haven't heard it already. And here's where we pause and we go to Google for ourselves. Unitive consciousness is a gift from our true self. Notice the T and the S are capitalized. The true self is a master knitter that can take seeming opposites and create a, a beautiful and truer perspective of what's really going on. It can see meaning in unfolding patterns beyond the chaos and confusion. Part of what makes the wisdom of our true self so powerful and brilliant is its relationship with our hearts. Fun fact, you guys should know this. Jesus is a reader of hearts and he was a reader of hearts when he was all divine and all human. On this earth this is where your conscience really starts to kick in you can't have this without christ he is our maker we have all of god in us in part we have all of god within us in part unitive consciousness take what he just said and then apply it to first corinthians 10 17. that is a wolf that is a false prophet he is out to seek kill and destroy just like his father the devil and no i am not exaggerating this man is not a clergyman of any sort he is not a christian and so we share in this consciousness and i'm not sure that that's what the apostle paul was thinking Ooh, i can answer that no and the bread is taken and the bread is broken jesus uses something so simple and yet so complex. This is so dangerous. When a drop of rain hits the ocean, it becomes the ocean from one and many and back to the one. This is where he says something that should sound off alarm bells for everybody in the congregation. A few moments later. And when you read the gospels, Jesus is a fully embodied, fully balanced person. Uh-oh. But he's not that because he, he, he's telling us that we can do it too. Uh-oh. Never once did he say, worship me. He said, follow me. Uh-oh. You will do greater things than these. Think about that. That we are to be in the same alignment. All the stories we've heard since we were kids, if we grew up in the church, that Jesus ate with sinners. All the people who were marginalized, he went out to the margins so that the margins were no longer the margins. Now, he went out to the margins to start pulling them back in so that they would actually be aligned. That's true alignment, is knowing to be one with Christ. Not one with yourself to where you are your own Christ. That was his message of integration because there is one bread. Nice job, team. All right, guys, now let's go ahead and take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. All right, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we're gonna start in verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment among themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. People have dropped dead from this during the time of Paul. This is serious. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. What else can I say? There are many who could be following him right now or things he's doing right now. And we wouldn't know it because he's off probably back at Washington, D.C., getting buddy-buddy with the Biden administration. 
So if you guys like this video, please hit like, share this video with someone who needs to hear it. Pagans in the church. I didn't think I'd ever live to see the day. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this video. I will see you all in the next video. Take care. God bless.